welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amanda, aka Braddy. So as you could tell by the title, this is going to be a story time about when my boyfriend passed away. Now, let's just see. We were together for seven years. Um, he was my first real boyfriend. Um, like, literally. We did everything together. We lived together. Um, <clears throat> we just, we was very close. Um, and it was Memorial Day weekend. Actually, it was Memorial Day. And my aunt was having like a get together for Memorial Day, basically a cookout with all my family. Da da da. So, everybody was drinking and, you know, having a good time, I guess. And. <clears throat> He decided that he wanted to drink. Now, mind you, he never drank. The only times that he drank was one, if we were separated, he would drink. And that's really it. Like, he obviously drank because everybody else was drinking. It was Memorial Day. And when he does drink, when he did drink, I should say, he used to get, like, reckless and annoying. Like... <laughs> is crazy and I didn't want to deal with it so he was having some drinks and I'm like okay cool but once I seen that he started to act like how I didn't want to deal with type acting that was my time to leave the party I just didn't want to deal with it I was avoiding you know what I'm saying like arguing and things like that so I had my brand new puppy with me it was me and her and I called I got in the car he didn't even nobody know knew what that I left I just got in the car and I left and I called my dad up right away and I'm like hey I'm like listen like I left <clears throat> where everybody else was da, 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 da. like I just want to let you know because nobody else knows I'm leaving like I just don't want to deal with it so whatever like we'll just fast forward like nobody was even calling me like nobody even realized i was gone i feel like like nobody was calling my phone it was the weirdest thing and let me just say this ahead of time like he was very clingy with me and and i'm not saying that in a bad way i'm saying like he was just clingy with me like i was like basically i was his first girl and i took his virginity okay um, he was a couple years older than me and yeah so let's just say like he would be blowing my phone up like that's the type of person that he was and if he couldn't get in touch with me because he was very very close with my family my family was like his family my mom was like a mom to him um his mom had passed away when he was a baby, so his grandmother raised him. And I was I'm very I was very close with his family, his grandma, his sister, all of them. And I still do talk to them to this day here and there. Anyways, like I said, if he couldn't get a hold of me, he's gonna be blowing up my mom or my sister looking for me. I'm just putting that out there now. Um so we will fast forward. Now at this point, me and him had our own apartment. We lived together in our own apartment. We had just moved in there a few weeks ago. The be we moved in May 1st, okay? So, that night, I'm just like, you know what? I'm not even going to sleep at the apartment. Like, I, I'm not going to. I was like, I called my mom. like, mom, I'm just going to sleep home tonight because I still had my bedroom here at my mom's house. Um, so, I had the dog and... Me and her just cuddled and went to sleep. Now, anyways, before I got to my mom's house, I got a phone call from his stepmom. Now, at this point, I don't know anything that's going on. What I do know is that I believe his brother and his cousin picked him up from my aunt's house because he was very, I guess he got very sick throwing up all over the lawn. Like, he was sick. And he must have called them. I don't know. And they picked him up from my aunt's house. 
and whatever happened after he left my aunt's house i don't know anything about at all the only people who know that is the people he was with okay so his stepmom has called me and she was like basically asking me what i was gonna do and i told her i was like i'm not dealing with that you guys can deal with it i, I don't want to deal with it you know what i'm saying like i shouldn't have to deal with that just because i'm his girlfriend like all that extra shit like him being sick is one thing but to deal with like the way he's talking and this i, I don't want to deal with it so y'all could deal with that tonight and tomorrow will be another day so like i'm pretty sure she was mad whatever we hung up like i said i got to my mom's house i laid down i'm in bed basically sleeping and I get, a, um, I get a text message, okay? Listen to this. I get a text message from his cousin, the one who picked him up. And this is all weird to me now. And it was back then, too. Um, he's like, hey, like, I took your number out of his phone, which is right there. Is like, why would he just give you his phone, like? Why would you be texting me from your number? Like, I'm confused. He's like, but anyway, he's like, what do you want? Like, what are you going to, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm not coming there tonight. I'm staying at my mom's house. I, like I said before, I don't want to deal with it. You guys can deal with it. So if you, if you guys are not going to stay with him, then like, why would you guys even bring him home? If you guys knew that you guys are all call me asking me what what's to do with him. So whatever level he's at, why are you guys not dealing with it? Y'all just dropping him off at the house and leaving him there? Like, something to me is fishy about the whole story. So, whatever. So, I guess they left him at the apartment by himself. Now, the, fun, the weird thing is that once they left him there, he would have woken up and noticed I wasn't there. And he still not calling me not call my mom not call my sister it, it it's weird to me so what really went down when they dropped him off i don't know i do not know so the next morning um my mom wakes up and my mom's like let's go get breakfast i'm like all right i'm like let's go drop the dog off at home and i'm gonna Call him and see if he wants to come get breakfast with us. Now, literally, I get in my car with my mom, the dog, and I'm blowing up his phone, his cell phone. Um, at the time, we had a package with the internet company where we had a house phone and all that stuff. So I was calling the house phone. I was calling his cell phone back to back to back to back. No answer. He would have had already been woken up. That's the weird thing. So I said to my mom on the way there, I'm like, mom, something's not right. Literally, like. So before I get to my apartment that morning, his cousin texts me and says, are you gonna go and check on him? What if he's dead? I don't know why that would come out of his mouth. Why would that come out of his mouth? That's weird. It don't make no sense. I get to the apartment. Now, mind you, I have my nephew with me as well. So it's my nephew in the back seat, my mom, the dog, and me. So I get the keys to my apartment. I walk in. I close the door behind me. All of a sudden, I turn around. And he's dead on the floor in my living room laying on his stomach his body was blue okay um i didn't know what to do i first of all i have a phobia of dead bodies like i have a phobia of it so i didn't want to go near him like i was scared you know what i'm saying like i seen that he was blue right there so i was screaming on the top of my lungs like 
everybody heard me. My mom heard me from outside and knew that something wasn't right. When I turned around to get out of the apartment, the door was locked up on me. I couldn't get the, out the apartment fast enough. So off rip, I'm screaming, crying. Um, I get in the car, I tell my mom, like, he's, he's dead, he's gone. Like, I call 911. Mind you, after I call 911, like, they took mad long to get there. Now, what if he wasn't dead yet? Okay, you guys took so long to get there that it's like, at that point, he would have been dead. After I call 911, I immediately call up his grandmother and his sister so I believe I spoke to his sister she answered the phone so from there like she hung up I guess she called his dad and all them and I don't really remember much because I was my I was not in the right state of mind I was not in the right state of mind at all um this is where it gets ugly and disrespectful. And I'll never forget this day. Um, anyway, all of my aunts and shit, they pulled up to the apartment. Like, everybody loved him. Like, a brother, like, a son. Like, they all loved him. So, my whole family shows up there before even, like, the ambulance gets there. And then his sister shows up there and then his dad shows up there with the stepmom let me tell you they they start screaming at me like all in my face telling me that i killed him telling me i'm not allowed at his funeral in his wake like all this crazy stuff mind you that apartment was my apartment and his apartment we were both on the lease i paid bills just like he paid bills i was working full time um everybody told me that I had I was told that I had to leave I couldn't be there I couldn't be there on the scene even though it was my apartment everybody else could stay but I had to go so there in my face telling me I killed him first I wasn't even with him I wasn't with him at all and for them to sit there and tell me that I couldn't go to his funeral and wake services and this I was with him for seven years and let me just say this like no disrespect because Whoever sees this video, sees this video. He used to talk about them all the time, his dad and his stepmom. Like, he was upset that his dad was never really there for him. He felt like his dad did everything for his other brothers and not him. His He loved his grandmother. His grandmother raised him. That was his mother. Like, his grandmother from his mom's side of the family. He was close with the, his grandmother and his sister and his brother. Like, because his dad had kids with his mom who passed away. And then he also had kids with his stepmom. They were all in my face. Like, I'll never forget that day. And, like, to disrespect me like that when you, y'all know. Whatever y'all did with him after that. And afterwards... Um, I got an apology, but that apology meant nothing to me. Because after that, <laughs> they I never talked to any of them again. They disrespected me to a whole nother level. And nobody knows what me and his relationship was like, but we're not going to get into that in this video. Um, we're not. So, anyways... I got to like pick out all of his clothes and everything for the wake like I got to do all of that it wasn't a good it wasn't good I wasn't on the right state of mind when I was at the wake like I was losing my shit I had to go to a hospital like I brought myself to a hospital because I was shooken up so bad I needed medication to calm me down like I literally had to bring myself to a hospital I had to go see a psychiatrist like to this day I will never forget what I saw, I will never forget any of it. And I will never forget him. That's, like, another thing. Like, that kid did everything for me. Like, he treated me like a queen. And at the time, I was just, like, I was young. I was with him since I was 15, 16 years old. 
Um, and I don't know, like, so anyways, once the autopsy, whatever got done, I got a phone call saying that he died from alcohol poison. And it's like, I don't know, like part of me doesn't really believe that. Like there's a part of me that believes that something more went down. Like maybe he did something else that I don't know about that he did with his cousin or whatever. But it's just messed up. It's really a messed up story. Like after that, my life was never the same, you know, like. It still affects me to this day and I'm 28 years old and I was 23 when he passed away so yeah it was like five years ago um that's the story that's my story like I feel like it just had to get out there the way like my side of the story you know what I mean like I don't know but anybody who is going through an experience like that where they lose a boyfriend a girlfriend husband wife like just know that is not something easy to go through and after that I couldn't be alone I was scared to be alone like so don't ever leave somebody alone who's going through something like that because it's not easy it's not easy at all so make sure you show them as much love and comfort as you can because it took me years to even feel like comfortable sleeping alone like I had to sleep with an, a light on like, I would be shooken up and scared after that. Like, but yeah, guys, thanks again for watching my video. Don't forget to comment, like, smash that subscribe button, and I'll be back with more videos. Um, turn on your post notifications so that you can see when my next video is uploaded. All right, guys, I'll see you on my next video. Bye. Bye.